Hey, hey artists! Welcome to another tutorial. Today we're going to be learning how to paint realistic Australian shepherd fur. Specifically this red merle that's got some really gorgeous like rusty tones in there and then there's some nice mottled silver fur. All sorts of good stuff. If you are interested in the full tutorial, real time with paint mixing and my voice walking you through every moment of it, then you can find that inside the Wildlife Painting Academy, which can be accessed from the link in the description of this video. All right, let's jump in. So I'm starting off by kind of blocking out my areas where my different chunks of fur are gonna go. Here I'm just thinning out some oil paint and lightly using it to kind of sketch in where those chunks are gonna go. Now I'm going in and I'm gonna to start to lay in those first blocks of my darkest tones, kind of going with a dark grayish brown here. Next up, I'm going with my next lightest tone that I'm gonna be using and I'm just adding a little bit more white to it to make it a bit lighter and I'm gonna to continue to block in my underpainting. Here I am using oil paint, but you can definitely achieve the same look with acrylics. I personally recommend using a slow drying medium when you're painting with acrylics and it's just going to make things a little easier to work with and you have a better chance of blending it. So continue in blocking in the different portions of your underpainting. I like to move from darkest to lightest so you can see that I'm starting to use a much lighter paint in order to block in that lighter colored fur. I'm just using basic filbert brushes here, trying to stay with the largest size of brush I can for that area just to make sure that I am moving more quickly and also not getting consumed with details too early in the game. So now I'm gonna go in and start to block in that nice rusty colored portion of fur. I'm starting with burnt sienna here because it's got a really beautiful darkness to it while still maintaining that really nice rust color that we're going for. And with that same paint, I'm kind of lightly feathering in where some of those contours are gonna go. Now I'm going in with a lighter version of that paint. I added some white to it to lighten it up and now I'm going to go and brush that into the remaining areas. Now this Aussie fur here has some really cool black modeling in it. So I'm going to go with the flat side of my filbert brush and start to brush in some of those black markings. Keep making sure that I'm staying with the direction that the fur grows in. So now I'm going in with titanium white on my brush here, I'm gonna lighten up some of that fur a little bit more. And now it's time to grab a handy dandy dry brush for blending. You might sure it is completely dry at this point and using a very light hand, I like to lightly blend out those brush strokes in the direction that the hair grows, just to make sure that everything looks nice and soft and smooth. If you end up picking up too much pigment on your brush, then just brush it on a rag or some paper towel to remove that paint. Now I'm going in with a smaller filbert brush and I'm gonna to start to again define some of those black markings that I want in that fur. Pay attention to how my hand sort of flows in the same direction as that fur. It's just gonna to help to give it a lot more shape and make it look more realistic. And now I'm going in with white and I'm going to start to build up some highlights in that fur. This stage really tends to make things pop and it's when you can start to see everything coming together. So now I'm grabbing a liner brush here with nice long bristles and I'm going to start to detail my fur. First I'm going in with ivory black because I want to get some nice sharp markings, those really nice black markings that are going to contrast nicely with that white fur and the rusty colored fur. Pay close attention to reference photos at this point. Details and their placement can make a huge difference in how your overall painting looks.
And now it's time to detail in with some white paint here. Take your time at this point. Details can be really important and it's a really fun phase, so make sure you take some time to actually have fun with your artwork. So I let my painting dry for a few days and now I'm going in with a couple of glazes to increase my shadows. So I'm going in with sort of a blackish purple glaze to deepen those shadows, add some contrast. And then I'm going to go in and also create a rusty colored glaze that's really going to make that nice fur pop. And now it's time for our final details. I'm going in with just a fine round brush here and adding in those final details that are just gonna make everything pop. Make sure you're not only paying attention to the direction that the fur grows in, but also the texture, the shape, and the length of the fur. That's all really important as well for achieving that realistic fur look. And we're done. So if you're like me and you taped your painting to a surface, you can now reveal those nice crisp lines by peeling that tape away. So like usual, if you want the full tutorial for this with my voice walking you through every moment of it, paint mixing videos and all that good stuff, that can be found inside the Wildlife Painting Academy. You can grab the link in the description of this video. If not, Thank you so much for watching. If there is a tutorial that you really want to see, leave a comment down below. Hit subscribe if you like what I'm doing here and you want to continue learning how to paint realistic wildlife. All right, thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next video.